Mr. Speaker, I rise belatedly to add my voice to the debate on the motion that has been presented by the Leader of Government Business, Member for Castries South, <coughs> and Minister Responsible for Tourism, etc. Mr. Speaker, on, on a day like today, given all the theatrics, the commotion, and the misguided enthusiasm we see, Mr. Speaker, as I was saying, I rise belatedly to add my voice to the debate on the motion presented by the member for Castries South, and leader of government business, and minister for tourism, investment, etc. And on a day, Mr. Speaker, like today, given all the theatrics, the commotion, and the misguided enthusiasm we see being displayed on the outside. And on a day, Mr. Speaker, what the member for Castries East and Prime Minister in a previous parliamentary disposition would have referred to as flashing mirrors. Amidst all of that, Mr. Speaker, I am once again reminded of the mandate given to me by the people of Denry North who after the general elections of 2011, 2016, and 2021, Mr. Speaker, they've sent me to the parliament to represent their interests. Mr. Speaker, they've mandated me to come into this chamber and to occupy one of the 17 seats reserved for elected parliamentarians. But they've also sent other people, Mr. Speaker, to this chamber to occupy the gallery as we saw earlier this morning. And so, Mr. Speaker, I'm extremely grateful for that opportunity given to me by the people of Denry North. Mr. Speaker, the matter that is before the House today, as simple as it is, the importance cannot be overstated. Mr. Speaker, the Parliament is the highest decision-making body of a country. This is where we make laws. This is where we enact legislation. This is where we approve budgets, Mr. Speaker. And this is where policies of governments translate into legislation. And so, Mr. Speaker, the business of this House is something we must take seriously. And above all, Mr. Speaker, the conduct and the disposition of members in this chamber is something that we have to watch and watch very closely. Mr. Speaker, our actions, our conduct, our decorum, Mr. Speaker, must be exemplary at all times. And I will be the first to admit that we have all, Mr. Speaker, on occasions gotten carried away by our own exuberance in the things that we say, Mr. Speaker. We get carried away from time to time. And all of us at some point, Mr. Speaker, have made pronouncements in here where we've been called upon to withdraw, and we have. I remember my time in opposition. I referred to a particular member on the government side as a political hitman. And notwithstanding, Mr. Speaker, that this was a figurative expression. It was <laughs> deemed inappropriate, Mr. Speaker. The member took offense, he felt slighted, and I was called upon by the Speaker at the time to withdraw. And without hesitation, Mr. Speaker, given, given consideration to how the member felt, I was very quick to withdraw the statement that I had made. So, Mr. Speaker, when the member for Miku South today is being asked to withdraw statements you would have made, statements that were injurious, to all of us on this side, and he's called upon to withdraw, Mr. Speaker, the member should have, in the spirit of true um, parliamentary democracy, withdrew the statement. He should have withdrawn, Mr. Speaker, and allowed the business of the House to continue. But today, Mr. Mr. Speaker, what we have seen is that this particular parliamentary infraction has triggered court action. It has generated a lot of debate in the public space, Mr. Speaker. 
and it does not in any way whatsoever portray our parliament in a light that it ought to be portrayed. Mr. Speaker, I believe there are consequences to behavior. There must be consequences to behavior. Irrespective of, of what level in the society you operate, you must be held to account for your actions. And in our case, Mr. Speaker, we have to be held to account for the things we see in this chamber. I cannot, as a Minister of Education, encourage principals and school administrators to enforce school rules and to say to children that when you break school rules or you, you, you infringe the rules that are established by your teachers and your principals, that you will be punished or you will be admonished. And then we come into the parliament where the country is supposed to take example, Mr. Speaker, and when we infringe or we violate the standing orders, we have a difficulty, Mr. Speaker, to admit that we have been wrong and that we can withdraw and we can show remorse for what we do. So, Mr. Speaker, I believe, as I said, in the power of example. And if the children who watch us on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, are to derive any meaningful example that can serve them well in the future from the proceedings of Parliament, I believe, Mr. Speaker, we have to ensure, and it doesn't matter who gets offended in the process, we have to ensure that the standing orders are upheld, the standing orders are defended, and that the legacy of the Parliament that we happen to constitute today will be one that the next generation will be proud of. Mr. Speaker, I support the reinstatement of the member for Mikud South. The member from Mikud South comes here, like any one of us, and he postures, Mr. Speaker, as we can, and it's our right to do in the chamber. But we must never forget or lose sight of the fact that when we come into this parliament, we did not come in here because we went through an examination process or we attended interviews and somebody handed a seat to us in the parliament. We went through the electoral process and people in the majority in the respective constituencies reposed their confidence in us and that is why how we were able to take a seat in this house. So this is not about him, Mr. Speaker. The reinstatement is not even about how he feels and his sentiments, but the people of Miku South, who rightfully deserve a voice in the parliament, should not, Mr. Speaker, be punished because of the actions of, of, of their representative. And so I support the reinstatement of the member. And the member for Castry South, Mr. Speaker, put it across beautifully this morning. There's a lot that he has to answer to, and he can't answer from the outside. He needs to be in here so that he can be part of a spirited debate at every sitting that can allow us to distill and to ventilate the issues of state that are of concern to the people of this country. Mr. Speaker, the member needs to apologize, notwithstanding whether the, the, the motion is upheld um, in the majority and, and, and that he can rightfully take his place in it. But I think out of humility, Mr. Speaker, the member needs to come in here and make the admission that, look, I erred, I was wrong on reflection, and I need to withdraw the statement that I made, which was deemed offensive to members on the governing side. Mr. Speaker, ours is a parliament that people speak about in very glowing terms across the region. And you have demonstrated, notwithstanding the barrage of criticism that has come your way, Mr. Speaker, but you have demonstrated that in the Caribbean, you are one of the most celebrated presiding officers um, in, in the parliamentary process. So, Mr. Speaker, with that, I conclude my very brief presentation. And as I said, it is my sincere hope that the member for Mikud South will find it in him, Mr. Speaker, to withdraw the statement, apologize, and allow the business of the parliament to proceed. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.